Chimir is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimir. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimir, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. A great mountain range divides the vast continent of Arvel. With rain and storm circling in from the northeast, the northern majority of Arvel is a verdant tropical forest filled with abundant and diverse megafauna such as sloths, titanosaurs, and the notorious megaraptorans. Most wind and storm stops at these mountains, then flowing back downhill and leaving the southern portion of the continent bereft, with only mountain springs and the occasional storm from the south hydrating its landscape. Instead of lush tropical forests, most of these uneven and temperate hills are covered in grass and sedges, with only the occasional forest of pine, maple, and oak growing in the river valleys. In this comparatively barren habitat, by far the most abundant and successful large herbivore is the mighty Chimeran mammoth, called the Bosuga in the common tongue. Mammoths came twice to Chimer. Although they may have been several replicated in this habitat, Mammothus trogontherii, or the steppe mammoth, was the most successful. Although there was ample food for this grass specialist, the terrain is uneven, and it seems that fairly quickly they lost a meter in average height and a few tons of mass in order to better navigate this uneven habitat, something there was little downside to do since this habitat was bereft of large predators bigger than a large jackal. The Titan Crow, among the largest in the region today, was still too small to be a threat to even these smaller mammoths. Since there also wasn't much in the way of large herbivores, with kangaroos and cervids being the next biggest grazers and mastodons sticking to the forest, mammoth populations exploded. As discussed in the history of the Proboscideans of Chimir, the arrival of Homo erectus to the highlands wiped out the mastodons and most of the mammoths. With a subsequent harvest, they were saved by a reinforcement population of steppe mammoths, but the downside was that several predators also came through. Although cave lions and giant hyenas were no threat to a healthy adult mammoth, juveniles were in danger. Even so, their population rebounded. There was another elephant now sharing the space, the Paleoloxodon dreduga, which retained its large size, though stuck to the forested river valleys, and several large grazers did come through with this new harvest, such as bovids and horses, though mammoths rebounded and reclaimed their former title as the most abundant megafauna, a title which they hold to this day. Although Zentar are not common in the highlands, as the open and uneven terrain is not to their liking, much less how cold it can get during the winter, when the occasional individual does cross the mountains or prowl along the southeastern border, they will often have little trouble bringing down mammoths. Being out in the open, they can often smell approaching Zentar from several miles off and take to higher ground, where Zentar are reluctant to follow. A herd can sometimes repel these predators, but unlike Drendugo, they are sometimes able to emerge victorious, especially against a young Zentar, a lone mammoth stands little chance. Mammoths are the most social of Chimeran proboscideans. Matrilineal herds of between 5 and 20 animals are typical. However, their social networks are expansive, and their wanderings might see them physically encounter as many as a dozen other herds on busy days, which are usually just greeting and passing by through sound, although sometimes friend groups will meet up and chat. Most of this close communication is by scent. Some herds are resident, although most migrate, to not deplete their pastures. Because of this, some friends will have not seen each other in years. Their infrasonic calls can travel for miles. Within two miles, they can often identify individual voices, and their dynamic calls mean assembly agents believe they have found a simplified yet consistent vocal language, with several hundred words identified. 
What they are saying in these communications is largely unknown, although they have some distinct dialects, which is also believed to be traced down through several match lines, although a few words are consistent. Most of this is an infrasound, so too low for people to hear, but with modern technology to analyze these infrasonic calls, assembly naturalists are optimistic that there may be a future in which we understand their infrasonic language. Although bulls were long thought to be solitary or live in small groups, it is now understood that they are active participants in this infrasonic network. Distressed calls can be heard from as many as 10 miles away, and it is typical for any mammoths in the area to come to their aid. Warning calls often carry far as well, and a few of the words that Assembly have tentatively identified include a call made only when Zentar, Lions, and Titan Crows are spotted, respectively. While Dranduga aren't nearly as communicative, these three words seem to consistently catch their attention, and large Dranduga bulls are known to respond to these words with a charge. In areas where Zentar are more common, such as the southeastern reaches of the Arvella Highlands, both species tend to flee the scent or warning of Zentar, but when they are not as common, the response is generally more aggressive. While it seems more intuitive that they might be the other way around, it is assumed that this is because warnings of Zentar and the dangers they pose have spread, and the network is actively working to prevent Zentar from spreading west, while those in the east know Zentar are a common threat to be avoided, although this theory is not universally accepted. More on that in next week's episode on the Drenduga. Although Chimerans and Homo altus do have settlements scattered throughout the highlands, they are mostly concentrated in the river valleys and therefore interact more with Trenduga than mammoths. However, people are perhaps their most common predator, and where these hunts do occur, mammoths are especially skittish. Their network has warned them about people and they tend to give settlements a wide berth and warn each other when humans, hunters, are on the move. Sometimes bulls will gather and launch assaults on these hunters and their settlements, though avoidance is much more common. It is assumed that matriarchs teach their young that short-term victory in these raids often result in retaliation, and it is often best to leave people alone whenever possible. Some communities, however, have a much more harmonious relationship with each other, even go so far as to communicate with and even negotiate with them. Likely due to their social network, the mammoths seem to know which people are dangerous and which aren't, and will interact with these peoples accordingly. In these mammoth-friendly settlements, mammoths are free to forage through pastures, feeding on weeds and fertilizing the soil while leaving crops largely untouched. In these settlements, some mammoths even help with more than just weeding, assisting with minor construction or clearing debris after a storm. In these few cases, friendly mammoths are recorded to have come to the aid of trusted people when their settlement is set upon by hyenas, lions, jackals, raiding peoples, or even zentar. To these peoples, mammoths are seen as beings in their own right, and spread the word when treated with respect, mammoths are much better allies than enemies. Unfortunately, rumors of these helpful mammoths have resulted in many being taken by peoples of the great nations for use as beasts of burdens and giant labor. As one might expect, this exploitative dynamic usually results in abuse, overworking, and stressed animals justifiably retaliating against their captors. These cases usually end in tragedy, so while it has been several events of mammoths being collected for labor, it rarely lasts long and interest usually dies off. An unusually successful event of using mammoths and Drenduga overseas was during the consolidation of the Khajurath Republic, but that will be covered next week. The Rewilding Initiative is a program by Assembly Naturalists and hopes to use Chimeran fauna to repopulate animals extinct on Earth. Mammoths have long been a subject of discussion. In their day, woolly mammoths were a keystone species and cultivator of the famous Mammoth Steppe Habitat, at times the most extensive terrestrial biome on Earth. 
As seen in the Vellith Highlands, mammoths turned a largely barren stretch of grassland spanning from Spain to Canada and elevated it to an unprecedented level of biodiversity and plant productivity. Woolly mammoths are now extinct on Earth, and their old habitat is bereft once more. While Chimerian mammoths are not the same species as Earth woolly mammoths, and indeed their ancestors were harvested before woolly mammoths first evolved, they are close enough in niche that they could provide similar benefits. The prospect of integrating mammoths is daunting, not only for the risk of zoonotic disease and extinctions of local flora and fauna eking out a living in the terrain as it is today, but also it would likely necessitate Chimere being known to the public, something Chimerians are understandably reluctant to do. There are many de-extinction initiatives in the works on Earth in the hopes of cloning mammoths. Most are money-laundering schemes, but a few are legitimate, and the rewilding initiative is considering using a cloning project as a front to introduce chimera mammoths to Earth. But most within the Assembly are against this plan, especially considering the intelligence of mammoths and the stress that would put them under in this transfer especially considering the plan might not work, and there's a very real risk of human poachers hunting them upon reintroduction. Most in the Assembly think mammoths are best left in their home in the Arvella Highlands, left to lead out natural lives without human intervention. Cheers to Grant for sponsoring this episode. Although not naturally found in the territories of the great nations, mammoths are very important to the vast ecosystems just beyond the known world, and I'm thankful to have added them to the roster for the series. Next week, we will meet the mighty Drenduga, another hairy elephant in the Arvella Highlands. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons, to my YouTube membership subscribers, and to you for watching. Platform support and watching ads is what makes this all possible, so I'm very thankful for the opportunity to do so. Stay fantastic, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Cheers, folks!